Fatma. Hello, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Um, thank you for joining me today for this interview. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I'd love to uh, hear more about uh, the piece and your angle and the reporting you've done thus far, but obviously, you know, want to make the most of your time. So please feel free to steer or ask whatever questions. Okay, we can just get started with the interview and then we can talk about it after. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of people are saying this is the most important election in US modern history. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes, at least in our lifetimes. Yeah. Um, would you like to, me to say more? Yeah, just elaborate okay. why you think that is. Yeah, um, I mean, I think, I think four years ago, uh, was was likely um, the most important election in our lifetimes, uh, but this certainly uh, trumps that, no pun intended. Um, I think over the course of the past four years, we've seen, um, you know, a lot of damage done to uh, democracy and a lot of damage done to what this country stands for. Um, you know, the Trump administration has uh, has followed through with a real assault on facts, a real assault on science, a real assault on our very sense of democracy. Um, and, you know, four years in, I find myself asking the question, how much more of this can we take? Um, and uh, I think, I think why this important is so election or why this election is so important is because um i think uh what this country really needs and what the rest of the world needs to see from this country is kind of a return to the values and ideas that we care about we need to embrace that in full and leave no doubt in people's minds what this country stands for and i think if um you know, the, the outcome were to be another four years of, of, of Donald Trump. Um, I think the world will forget and many people here in this country will forget. And, and, and mind you, the, the people here in this country are, are struggling and I can elaborate more on that, but they'll forget uh, who we as a people and who we as a country really are. And so that's why I think it's so important. Who do you think you are as a country? Um, I think one, we're, we're a country of immigrants, you know, uh, my, my father being, um, second generation Irish and my mother being first generation Pakistani, I think we're, we're a country of, of immigrants. Um, but I, uh, I think, um, let me, let me answer this. Who, who are we as a country? Um, Country of immigrants, a uh, country of diverse populations and diverse ideas, uh, which I don't think uh, we necessarily in this uh, environment and, and this um, sort of political juncture have the opportunity to really explore because of how sort of radical and disoriented um, the 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 administration has has made certain ideas and policies um i think uh you know um uh i think i think at, at its heart america is a good and decent place and uh, yeah, maybe that's, that, that's the best answer. It's a good and decent place. And we've got people from all over the world, all sorts of backgrounds, all walks of life. Um, but, you know, uh, people are forgetting that. And we, we're struggling to embrace that because as Obama said in his speech a couple of days ago, or was it yesterday, um, there's just so much noise and nonsense mm -hmm. um, that we forget, you know, why we love uh, the cities and states we live in, why we love, you know, the different backgrounds um, that, that, that people have, um, the different last names that people have, the different colors they have, the different people they marry and, and children they raise. Um, I think that's what makes America special, having lived all over the world, having traveled all over the world and being from 
all sorts of places. I, I come here and I realize that everyone kind of shares this same sort of sentiment. Uh, and, and, and I see less and less of that. You talked about being a kid of immigrants. So is that something you consider when voting, like whose policies are better towards um, immigration and foreign policy? Or do you more, more so focus on like economic policy, tax policy, maybe climate change? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's one or the other. Um, I think if you, if you look at the founding of America, it's both, right? Uh, at the time it was a colony comprised of immigrants that set out to create their own policies. Um, so so, so it, it sort of in one fell swoop, they were embracing their heritage and this newfound land while trying to create a better sort of lifestyle um, and economy and sense of freedom and liberty for themselves. And I think that's kind of been a through line throughout American history. Um, I think, uh, I think that the truth is we are a country of immigrants. And I mean, I live in California, um, you know, more than 50% of Californians are, are first or second generation Spanish speaking immigrants. So I think when you think about um, tax policy or education or healthcare reform on a state and local level, you're inherently talking about our immigration, uh, immigrants rather. Um, I think, uh, to touch on sort of more more global issues, uh, America's standing in the world uh, has has taken a real hit, um, and you know this country um, in 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 prior years uh, sort of served as um, one a leader in uh, you know some of the world's most pressing issues such as climate change and. Um, you know, political and geopolitical instability all over the world, but, but to kind of a model, right? And, and what sort of model are we serving today? Certainly not one that, that I would want to follow in the footsteps of. Um, speaking of immigrants in California, have you felt since the last election there has been more racism or xenophobia? Um, it's hard to say in California. However, last year I took some time off and did a cycling trip uh, or a bike tour across the country. Okay. And so um, I visited 13, 14 different states, um, many of which are, are deeply Republican. Um, and, you know, uh, myself, uh, being half Pakistani, but but looking the way I do, I, I didn't necessarily have to face that head on. Um, but I could tell in, in conversations, um, you know, people are good at heart and and kind and care about other communities. But I think it's the rhetoric that uh, the Trump administration has instilled in folks. Um, the the uh, ability they that they've been provided to to be more xenophobic and to be more hateful. Um, it's as if they have a free pass because the, the man in the White House, uh, you know, does so himself. So yes, I think you've definitely seen um, more of that. I think um, like, a, a really good example is is the the um, protests and counter protests you're seeing, right? Um, when you look, I'm a student of history, and I think when you look back to again the founding of America, and then every sort of important milestone since, protesters um, have been at the at the forefront um, of, of of change. However, today protests, you know, aren't being paid attention to. Um, one by local leaders, two by the president. In fact, counter protesters are encouraged to go out, encouraged to be violent, um, and encouraged to sort of um, adopt a more um, radical uh, and, and, and anti uh, perspective. So I think I, I think it's yes, it's extremely blatant, the xenophobic and, and anti-immigrant and anti. Um, black and, and, and racist uh, sort of um, uh, viewpoints that are surfacing. Talking about the protests, um, America is currently really divided, whether that's racially or politically, maybe even religiously. Do you think if Biden wins, that's going to change? Or do you think it's going to take more than just that? Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, I think, I think, um, I think it will certainly take, sorry, I'm, I'm just thinking about this. I think it will certainly take more than just that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, nothing changes overnight. You'll likely have a backlash. Um, uh, you know, a lot of these thoughts and beliefs and, and policies are, are deep rooted. Um, so it certainly won't change overnight, but it'll instill a, a sense of hope. It at least gives me hope. Um, I think, uh, we've seen what the U S can be at its best. Mm -hmm. Um, and that should be sort of, um, uh, the model state. I mean, uh, to, to just, I, th I think these four years have actually shown us, um, a lot, right. When you think about, um, family separation and children being put in cages and the number of people that showed up at ICE centers to protest that. When you think about the Muslim ban and the fact that protesters shut down airports and a lot of the positions were reversed virtually over one weekend. When you think about, um, you know, uh, the threat to our, our, our planet and how uninhabitable it's, it's becoming and, and how people, um, you know, are, 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 are not letting an issue like that slide. I think these are, these are hopeful signals that we know what needs to happen and enough people care. We've seen um, that people are willing to volunteer, are willing to contrib contribute, are willing to put their lives at stake when you think about essential workers um, you know, saving people and, and, and in the face of a global pandemic, like these things are here. We know what America can look like at its best. It's just so buried under the surface as again, Obama said, all this noise and nonsense. So I think, no, it won't change overnight, but you kind of have to create this change and have a hopeful figure in order for these things that we know are so important to bubble up again. So my final question to you is, if you could say something to first or second generation immigrants in America before the election, what would it be? Um, vote for your values, vote for what you believe in. Um, I think like take a step back and think about, um, you know, why, why your parents or grandparents came to this country um, and, 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 uh, try to channel that sentiment into how you vote. Think about like what actually matters, um, what will create a better life for you um, and what will create a better life for your children, just the same way that your gra grandparents and grandparents did. Um, you know, d does that mean, um, you know, uh, I, 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 I'll refrain from listing off issues or policies again, but I think, um, you know, uh, People came to this country because of uh, the idea that we we have the ability to preserve democracy and that we have integrity in our elections. So 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 voting is 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 number one and and two. You know, um, think about every hot topic issue, whether it's Black Lives or climate change or science or immigration or healthcare. Like think about how those align with your values and what you believe in and why you know America was. Uh, supposedly a place where you could create a better life. Um, that's, that's what I'd say. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Reza. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.